May our hearts be guided in the presence of God, our source, Savior, and sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> we have our instructions. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. These might seem like very expansive and somewhat daunting requests from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Always, without ceasing, all circumstances. How are we supposed to constantly rejoice, pray, and give thanks in our lives? But Paul does not leave us hanging after his instructions. He goes on to give us more guidance. Do not quench the spirit, he says. Do not quench the spirit. This is good news. God is the constant one, not us. Perhaps the abundance in Paul's exhortations to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances is more a reflection of God's abundance rather than ours. We can't follow any of Paul's instructions without God. Mary expresses God's abundance in what we know as the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Mary responded to her pregnancy with joy. Mary lived her life fully embracing and believing in the abundance of God. On this third Sunday of Advent, we remember joy in God's abundance. Gaudete, or Rose Sunday, it's often called. Gaudete is Latin for rejoice. Rose Sunday, because the purple candle brightens to pink to symbolize joy. And you'll notice we have a pink candle lit on our Advent wreath this morning. A rose candle, if you want to be persnickety about the color. When we think about Mary's Advent, we can note that she did not deny her difficult situation. She did not say that she believed she would have an easy life and then her new situation would be smooth sailing. Mary could have hidden in apprehension, but she decided not to quench the spirit. Becoming pregnant as an unmarried woman was a dangerous situation for her. Joseph could have rejected her. She could have been left unprotected and scorned by society, but she trusted. She focused on what she knew that she could trust the greatness of the Lord. And her response to Gabriel's announcement about her pregnancy was not one of fear, but of joy. She expressed in the Magnificat, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Danger lurked on the horizon, but Mary chose joy. She chose hope. I don't believe her choice came from a place of cluelessness or naivety. She mentions the proud in their conceit and the mighty on their thrones, the hungry and the lowly. She knew what the world was like, and still she chose to rejoice in God. It is because she believed in the greatness of the Lord that she could move forward on the risky journey ahead of her. Our world is experiencing many risky journeys of its own, with war and violence taking place every day around the world, it can feel almost flippant and insincere to say that we should be joyful. It can feel inappropriate to emphasize joy when pain surrounds us. But the version of joy we are called to lean into in Advent is hope. This fierce and defiant joy of hope empowers us to find God's love and the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit even in the midst of pain. To allow God's movement right now to give us hope for the future. Mary's words in the Magnificat held everything all at once. Joy, pain, the challenges of the world, with Mary as our inspiration, we can find hope in the midst of fear and chaos. To hold on to Advent hope in spite of everything happening around us. Like Mary, 
Even when our lives feel precarious or the world feels dangerous and shadowed, we can choose to say, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. It is a bold choice to hold on to hope. Kate Bowler, a contemporary theologian, expresses in her Advent devotional that we hope in Advent as protest. Hope can feel irrational. But we hope not because we believe that everything is good and safe in the world. We hope because we believe that even in the midst of chaos and suffering, God is still with us. Hope does not deny the existence of pain. Hope holds all that we are experiencing. We can choose to boldly believe in the simmering and anticipatory joy of Advent and of hope because we need it. Even in the midst of chaos and suffering, Jesus can appear at the end of our Advent. So we hold on to the hope of Jesus. We choose prayer and joy and gratitude when we lean into the hope of Advent. We open ourselves up to the promise that something beautiful can enter our lives even in the midst of storms in our lives and around the globe. We may not be physically capable of constant laughter, constantly praying words out loud instead of ever saying anything else or exclusively thinking about gratitude. But I believe Paul's invitation to us is to allow the abundance of the Spirit to wash over us and that we strive to be constant witnesses to God as best we can. God is constant where we are unreliable. And through hope, we allow the breath of God to flow in us. Through hope, we open ourselves up to see what God does along the winding paths of our lives. Through hope, we do not quench the spirit. Take an example. Have any of you ever used an expanding or pop-up sponge? It's all flattened and condensed until you add the water. And then it expands to the size and shape of a regular sponge. The water does the work. Or did any of you ever play with those expandable sponge toys? They come in little colorful capsules that look like pills. And when you place them in water, they expand from a tiny pill-sized object into a little dinosaur or a little truck or something. Now instead of a tiny smashed up piece of sponge, you have a little foam dinosaur to play with. They may be small on their own, but with water, they expand and become 10 times their size. Those sponges don't change their molecular structure. Their size changes because they absorb the water. If we are like the sponges, God is the water. We can hold all that we are, our joy, grief, our laughter, our tears, all of it, and God still expands us. And we don't have to be anyone other than who we are. We just have to allow the Holy Spirit to flow through us. So do not quench the Spirit, Paul tells us. Because it is the Spirit that expands and fills us. It is the Spirit that brings us hope. So, okay, do not quench the Spirit. Sounds good. How do we do that? We're not merry and we're not expanding sponges. What does this look like? For us, we can allow the Holy Spirit to flow in our lives by noticing God's presence all around us, by checking in with God through prayer, by practicing our awareness of God saturated in other people and in God's creation surrounding us. We can allow ourselves to find hope in God's presence with us now and with God's connections to us in the future. God shows us the paths to joy. God teaches us to pray with our lives and not just our words. God guides us toward gratitude. Not quenching the Holy Spirit means that we allow God to be God. 
God moves where we cannot. God guides us to find joy, to pray, and to give thanks when we cannot fathom it ourselves. May we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us and move in our lives in every way possible. So do not quench the Spirit. Sit with the Advent joy of hope. Amen.